Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to form and pour a curved concrete walkway. So this this walkway was a little challenging in, in the way that it had some curves to it. It has some straight part to it. It had a bunch of different pitches to it. And that's, you know, I, I'm going to show you how I attack that and get this done. Now, if you guys don't know me, if this is the first time watching my videos, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. Uh, my videos are all about concrete flat work, whether it's stamp concrete, slabs, floors, uh, patios, pool decks, a lot of concrete repair. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure you go head down there and hit subscribe and hit the little bell notification too, and you'll be notified of all my videos. I come out with a couple a week. So when I started laying this thing out, I thought the best way to attack this also, yes, this is part one of a part two series where part two, I'm going to show you how we stamp this walkway. So I'll have a link for that at the end of the video. So make sure you check that out, too. That's going to be pretty cool. So when I started laying this out, you know, it, it had a bunch of different pitches. It pitches from the driveway away from the house. And then it also pitches from the front entryway on the other side away from the house. And... The best way to do this is just to get one side set up first, and then you can go ahead and set up the other side. So there was part of this coming off the driveway that flared out and then was pitching, like I said, away from the house. And then it went into a little bit of a straight part there for about 30 feet. And then it curves back again around to the house. And the inside board, the one I'm working on right there, has a little bit different curve than the outside board, as you can see. So they wanted this little bit bigger kind of patio area going into the house. And then they wanted that walkway area going to the driveway. So, you know, my dilemma was how do I make both these curves look good when it was pretty much just left up to me to, okay, here's the dirt, you know, give us a walkway that looks good. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to use my best judgment based on my experience to uh, make this thing look as good as I can. And getting the form set up, I mean, that's pretty much half the battle is getting the forms up, getting the curves right, getting the grade set. This thing pitched about four inches from those stairs going into the breezeway out to that outside board. So there's quite a bit of pitch. They didn't want any water sitting here. They had, you know, a bunch of roof lines that were kind of pitch that way so they get a lot of rainwater off the roof onto that area. So I made that straight board right there, those two two by fours parallel with the garage. And that's kind of how I started. And then flared that up to the driveway. And now I'm making this curve here going back to the house and getting that all set to grade. Then I can kind of use that to go from I can measure off that if I need to, you know, for the outside board. So I got that one curb board set now for the outside, and they wanted that to bump right into that, that patio right there, that deck, and then curve around to the straight pot, which is what I'm starting to stake right now. So there's a little bit different flare on the outside than there was on the inside. I'm using those PVC, they're called AZAP. They're actually trim boards uh, people use when they build houses. Those things curve really nice. They're pretty rigid. But they, they can curve really good without breaking. And uh, they're pretty firm and sturdy for pouring concrete against. So now we're getting this other flare. They want it to curve around kind of right there where Tia was standing and then flare out over there where Abby was standing. So when they walk up into the driveway, it widens out to about seven feet from the width of the walkway, which was about four feet. And also pitched up quite a bit. It pitched up from where I am right now to the driveway about three inches. So that had quite a bit of pitch to it also. Probably the most challenging thing on this whole form job was pounding those stakes in. The guy who put the gravel in did a good job. And man, he, he had that stuff packed so hard that uh, I about killed myself pounding those stakes in. And remember, we're going to be stamping this. So... It's best if when you're putting your stakes in that your stakes are below grade. 
Now, some of these went in so hard, I couldn't get them all below the top of the form. So we'll have to deal with that when we go to stamp it. Like I said, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, coming right up, I'm going to show you how we pour this walkway. And then in the next video I got coming up after this one, I'll show you how we stamp and seal this thing. Right now, I'm just making sure I like how that flare looks, how the curve looks, putting in the rest of my stakes. You see, I, I was using my laser there now and then to make sure my pitches were all right. You want to make sure the water pitches away from the house and runs off the walkway. So there's quite a bit to form in these things. Um, definitely a lot more than just throwing the forms down and, and staking them. You got to make sure your pitches are all right. Everything's nice and gradual and that no water sits anywhere. I like that laser. That laser I'm using is a TopCon RLH5B. I'll have, there's a link for that down in the description. You can get that right on Amazon. That's a self-leveling laser. It's really simple to use and it makes setting your grades so easy. So there, I got it just about form, formed up. Now we're going to get ready to pour this thing. And what we're going to use for concrete is we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete mix that's got air entrainment in it. And the air entrainment is just to help with the freeze and thaw cycles. We live up here in Maine, so from about the end of November till March, we have a lot of ice and snow and the temperatures go from freezing at night to above freezing during the day. So the air entrainment in the concrete is like tiny little microscopic air bubbles in the concrete and it allows the water when it gets absorbed into the concrete to freeze and expand inside those little air bubbles without damaging the concrete or popping the surface. We're pouring probably about a five inch slump with this uh, 4000 PSI mix. We're going to get this bigger patio area poured out first and then we'll screed that down. We set the top of the forms to grade to help make the screeding a lot easier. We also put some what's up against the foundation of the house and up against those stairs we put what's called an ISO strip. It's like a little half inch piece of foam so it gives the concrete you know room to shrink, room to expand and contract without being uh, held back by the foundation of the stairs which would which would lead to maybe some cracking down the road if, you know, if the concrete can't move the way it wants to move. We'll get our screeds out. All these tools, guys, you see us use these magnesium screeds, the aluminum come-alongs or rakes, bull float we use. All those links are down in the description if you guys want to use the same kind of tools we do. So remember, this thing slopes about three or four inches away from those stairs. It's got quite a good slope to it. So there won't be any water sitting on it. And we're getting this screeded off. Now we're done with that big one. Now we're gonna get the little one. Eric's gonna jump up in there and screed that little piece out while I stop pouring some more concrete. We also got some wire mesh reinforcement in this. We got some little chairs under the wire mesh that'll help holding it up off the ground. That's the problem with using wires, trying to keep it up off the ground. And we got fiber mesh in the concrete also, so it's got a double reinforcement in it. You see Eric's magging the edges. We get out, we always mag our edges smooth to the top of the form before we screed. That just helps us screed a little better and it also makes the finishing process a little easier. We never just screed the concrete and leave it rough poured like that. Eric's going to come down that little four foot piece and we'll get that part both loaded. Again, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Also, if you like this video, if you're finding any value with it, I'd appreciate it if you'd go down there and smash that like button. The more likes I can get, you know, the, the more YouTube shows my videos to everybody and I can help teach people how to do these things. So we're each, me and Eric there, are each going to grab a side of that straight edge and 
down each side and Abby's there. No, that's Tia there doing the raking. Tia's my daughter. This is a summer job for her. She goes to college and Abby's the one bow floating. She's, she's a good friend of Tia's. They worked all summer for me. They did really good job working. They picked up concrete really fast too. I mean, you just got to have a little common sense. You got to be willing to listen and learn and, and just not be lazy pretty much. And uh, anybody can do this. So we got this thing almost poured out now. So you just got to take your time and move steady. This It was really hot this day. I think it was around 85 degrees. You know, the sun's kind of shining on one end. You got a little shade in the middle, then the sun's shining on this end that we're here right now, which makes it a little challenging to stamp. So, again, make sure you check out that next video on part two where I'm going to show you how we stamp this thing. So we got this one last flare to do. We're going to straight edge it. And it kind of goes uphill to the driveway. And I'm putting a little bond breaker there between the new concrete and the driveway because he's going to end up putting in a new driveway at some point. That asphalt wasn't in very good shape. So when they tear that asphalt out, they don't want to damage the new concrete. But the key to pouring concrete walkways like this is, you know, you got to, especially ones with a lot of pitch, you can't pour it too wet, otherwise you're going to damage the concrete when, and it won't slope correctly. I mean, and you can't really pour it too dry because then it's too hard to work with. So you got to have a good workable slump, which is how wet or how dry the concrete is. And, you know, between a five, five or six inch slump is about what you want to ask for for something like this. You can see Abby's getting that bowl floated nice and smooth. Having somebody who knows what they're doing with a bull float helps make the finishing process a lot easier also. So that's how you form and pour a curved concrete walkway, guys. I mean, if you like this video, please go down there and hit the like button. I uh, appreciate you watching. And I want to make sure that you come back and check out part two of the stamping. So if you want to learn about stamping concrete, check that out. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.